We're starting with a story that had a lot of people talking. It is Houston's Astro World Festival, now considered one of the deadliest concerts in U.S. history. Eight people are dead, the youngest just 14 years old. Many more injured after the crowd of 50,000 surged towards the stage. So performers Travis Scott and Drake, they're being sued, facing accusations of inciting the stampede. I, this was everywhere this weekend. What was your reaction to this? I think my initial reaction was that there are actual people who study this very thing. There are scientists who study crowds, uh, scientists who study crowd violence and mob violence. And one of them said, with, in relation to the, what had happened over the weekend, that safety has no profit. So it tends to be the last thing in the budget at mm. something like this. And I think I read there are 588 members of security to sort of handle 50,000, probably more people. I think that puts it at like one security member per like 95 to 100 people. But then they're saying also that it looks like the injuries didn't happen when people tried to exit the venue because once the concert was actually stopped, space that space cleared within an hour. So what, what causes these surges? What incites this violence? You know, it's funny because it's not funny, actually, but they were saying how, uh, you know, I was watching some of the experts over the weekend who study exactly what you're saying there, Jess, and they were like, if you look at the breakdown, it didn't happen at that moment. Things were set in motion from before that concert ever started. And I think that's the scary part. If you are talking to a parent who has lost a child, uh, many of these people were like much younger than 20. <clears throat> and so my heart is breaking for them when you hear that the breakdowns started so early. I mean, I just have questions how 50,000 people, unless every single person's vaccination status was checked, how that even happened, that concert, if you can do that yeah. safely. I do it's have Texas, those questions. Isn't it? You know, it's, I, I mean, it's Texas. I don't know what that means. I mean, if you're 12 or are you even getting the vaccine down there yet? I don't know. Uh, but I do think now, certainly when I think of the children who are in the crowd, if Travis Scott and company knows, like not that it makes it better or worse, but they are literally physically smaller than other people. And if they're everywhere in that crowd, I mean, certainly from here on in, we're going to see, I think, concerts happen differently. But when you especially know that little people are in there, what are you doing to keep them safe? I think that's going to be the biggest outcome after this horrific tragedy. I wouldn't have thought that Travis Scott was to blame, and I don't think he's fully to blame by any means, but unfortunately his track record doesn't sound good. I, apparently he's been charged before previous concerts uh, for asking Inciting people, right? Inciting a riot yeah, was the, right, uh, what right. he was arrested for previously, yeah. And you know, when I first heard about this story, I thought, what a terrible freak accident, but that's because I'm not one of those experts that Mel and Jess, you were talking about before, and actually, People make it their jobs to create security and safety yeah. at these huge events. And, you know, I have to say, like, lawsuits are, are happening now, and that will never bring back the people who died. So I, I don't know. I'm not a legal expert. Um, but I do think that Travis Scott, being the artist on stage, has to take at least some of the responsibility because... The artist on stage sets the tone of the entire hmm. show. Mm -hmm. And in fact, he can stop the show at any point. You know, social media, mm -hmm. I did not know who Travis Scott was before, by the way. I did not know him from Adam. And then oh, this weekend, Kylie, Kylie Jenner? Jenner? No, I did not. Daddy? I don't follow. Right. I'm sorry. You, you I, know, you're busy with other things. I it's okay. Apologize. <laughs> I, but then I got a lot to, I got to know um, a little bit about how people are feeling right now, they are so angry with Travis Scott, right? And then I started to feel angry too because people were sharing lots of social media clips of other rock stars on stage at shows that are just as big, stopping everything when they right. spot mm -hmm. something happening in the crowd. And you know what? When your hero is on stage saying, oh, wait, hold up, somebody's in trouble way, way in there, and then and let's wait for security to get in there, Everybody is so happy to, to follow along. And then when, you know, Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters or like Linkin Park, and they say, <clears> okay, <throat> we're cool now. The guy's good. Everybody cheers. Like, right. yeah. why can't I mean, I don't that? know. I wouldn't, I wasn't there. I don't know. I haven't watched footage from this. Uh, you know, again, don't. Nate, it's terrible. Why? It is I terrible. Yeah. 
I mean, I wouldn't. I, I mean, I'm curious, though, like, do we think there was a systems failure? Like, what if he was let, like, if anybody bothered to let him know that there was something happening? There was it's an ambulance coming through the crowd, and he kept performing. I think that well, that's that a sign, happen. Someone Travis. fainting, that, you could see that happening at an outdoor festival, uh, you know. But the ambulance was on top of the ambulance? Of people. So dancing, mm -hmm. I would have been yeah. like, if I was trapped, I mean, listen, we're going to all play Hindsight's 2020. That's the game here. But uh, if you're seeing an ambulance, coming through now people are jumping on the ambulance and dancing on the ambulance like it, okay, you know it there are like a chaos. lot of people who have shared clips yeah, that share that they were like he yes. could see that there wasn't just one thing going down that's the problem which is which is the the mob mentality that i was speaking of i know now is not the time to get philosophical on this uh sort of thing because people lost their lives but it is a fascinating thing how these how these things grow and I will say that it's, I also find it disturbing that they promoted this year's festival with footage from 2019 of people breaking through barriers and getting trampled. It was almost like they were not foreshadowing, that's the wrong word, but maybe embracing this bad boy, dangerous sort of reputation that the festival has as a whole. Yeah, I mean, it does make you, like, again, I was never the type of person who was going, like, to the front stage of a concert. Like, even back at, like, Lollapalooza oh, no. days, I was back, like, the hippie in the field in the corner picking flowers. But but would this change? Like, would, if, would you go to a concert? No. Would you let your children? I mean, oh. your, your children are not age yeah, yet, but no, they might, not, they will be. But, well, one day they're going to want to go to shows. And, you know, when you hear of a tragedy like this as a parent, it's just... It's terrifying, you know? I mean, this should not have happened to these young people who are at the cusp of the beginning of their lives. I mean, I, I think that people have been talking about how big the show was, and uh, it is a bit of a foreign thing to see now, just coming out of this pandemic and where we are, where we are right now. I will say, though, that I had an experience of being trampled at a show. It was a very small show, comparatively, but it can happen anywhere, is what I'm saying. And it happened so fast. There was a surge of people. I was in the mix, and I was just lifted off my feet, and then I was on the ground. <gasps> and there was nothing that you could really do. I mean, thank goodness I was fine. And, and I was thinking of that as I was reading about this uh, story on the weekend. There's, I mean, <sighs> yeah, I was just lucky. Like, you're screaming down there, nobody can hear you. Nobody sees oh that you've gosh. gone down. I was really panicking. And I just um, had some, like, energy, primal energy, and climbed up people. And then when I got out and I looked at myself in the mirror in the bathroom, I'm crying. I'm covered in, like, uh, footmarks. Yeah. Footprints? And, yes. And it was <sighs> very terrifying. And, you know, I, I don't even like to think about it because I don't like to think about these young people over the weekend. And that have, was yeah. their last moment. Yeah. It's just, that I, never I will say happened. our kids are still small, Sin, but, you know, it's all, all uh, Hannah, yours as well. They're still younger. But, you know, listen, there's a fine line in my life between paranoia and preparedness. And I don't know where that line lies some days. But I'll still go anywhere. And my first look around a room is always where are the exits? How quickly could I get out of here if I needed to get out of here? And like, these are the things you want to teach to your child, but at the same time, don't want to frighten them to death. So, you know, I, now, of course, I'm thinking it'd be a long time before I would say, Marquez, it's okay to go to a concert, you know, unless it's the Toronto Symphony Orchestra or something where I know it's probably going to be probably a little bit more subdued. Yeah. <laughs> you know